And then all you do is just put your drink down on the bar and you leave it alone. I'm not sure you expected that to happen and neither did I. Welcome back and I've got another really fascinating experiment for you today. We're going to be looking at magnetism and the Curie point. So this is a fantastic experiment and one I've been wanting to show you for a long time. All I need is some simple apparatus. I've got a tripod and a Bunsen, some very strong magnets and these are the flints out of um, cigarette lighters, the ones that spark. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of these tiny flints, uh, it's really quite small, and I'm going to put it on the tripod and I'm going to see if it's magnetic and then I'm going to get it really, really hot. So here's the little lighter flint and I'll put it on the tripod and here are my strong magnets and I'll just see if it's magnetic. And there we go, you can see it's picked up and it sticks quite well to the magnets so it shows magnetic properties. So now let's get it really, really hot with a Bunsen. Right, let's put the lighter flint on the gauze, light the Bunsen up and it's on the roaring flame and let's just heat that flint for a while and get it really roasting hot. So it's got warm pretty quickly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the magnets and I'm gonna see if I can pick up the lighter flint. So I'll just turn the Bunsen off. It's red hot. And it doesn't pick up at all. It seems to have completely lost its magnetic properties. You'll notice it's glowing really, really brightly because it's very hot. And it still won't be picked up. So what we'll do is we'll just let it cool down a little bit and see what happens to it as it cools down. So you can see the red colours going. Why it was red is a completely different bit of physics and uh, maybe I should do a video on that. And, oh look, up it comes again. So a few moments ago it was magnetic, then we heated it and it wouldn't be magnetic at all, it wouldn't stick to the magnets. And now it's cooled down again and it seems to be magnetic. So this is going to take some explaining. So time for a bit of an explanation. And of course, I'm slightly simplifying this work, but it gets us some way to understanding what's going on. So uh, we're looking at the area of the Curie point or the Curie temperature on magnets. And interesting things happen to magnetic materials above the Curie point. This effect is using physics around that sort of area. To cut a long story short, when we have a material like this bit of a lighter flint here, it's not magnetic when it's away from magnets. But when we put it close to magnets, the uh, atoms inside it have a magnetic property where they all line up, we call these domains. And if they're all lined up like little compass needles, we end up with an induced north and south pole. However, when we heat this, the atoms are vibrating much, much more. They've got thermal energy. And whilst the external magnetic field would like to line up those atoms, line up those magnetic domains to produce a north and a south pole, there's far too much thermal agitation, there's far too much vibration. And so the atoms just can't line up to create a consistent magnetic field. But of course, when you let it cool down again, the atomic vibrations become less and then they can line up and we get our induced magnetic poles again. So the material appears to be a magnetic material. So a lovely little experiment, and one I've been meaning to show you for ages, and quite easy to demonstrate. So the physics is a little bit complicated, but at least you can get some idea that atoms have magnetic properties, and below certain temperatures you can line up those magnetic properties, and above certain temperatures there's too much thermal agitation for this to happen. So, I hope you enjoyed that video, and I look forward to seeing you again next time.